Radio. Lord Moylan joins me, Conservative peer. How are you, first and foremost, on a momentous I'm, day? I'm, I'm very well, though, like everybody, uh, I'm anticipating what's going to be um, a difficult week in some ways. Mm. Um, I think that as the, um, um, the, the, the real emotion, I think, will start to appear as we see the ceremonial as well. And mm. as the, often, even in your own family, it's the funeral more than the death that mm. actually allows you to... Um, experience the emotion of bereavement. Um, so I think it's going to be a challenging uh, week for the whole country. It is indeed. And actually, I think you've hit on a key point there. A little bit later on, we're going to be having more of a discussion about the process of grief as the nation comes to terms with what's happened. I think there's those natural stages of grief, aren't there? I certainly... It's not hit me fully, exactly what happened. No. I went down to Buckingham Palace in the immediate wake of the announcement of our Queen's Sad passing and loads of people just standing, kind of staring into the abyss, actually, really, not knowing what to say, an eerie silence over it. But as you alluded to there, Lord Moylan, this process of the Queen leaving Balmoral via Aberdeen to where she is now, uh, Holyrood House, where she will remain overnight and then gradually down south, do you think this helps the nation, although it was unintended, it helps the nation come to terms with this grieving process? Well, I think it is part of the grieving process, and it's something that we do well for our royal family and, and great figures, because that ceremonial aspect, aspect is, is part of the, the purgation, if you like. It's mm. part of the transition. Um, every, everybody really, every family needs some form of ceremonial to mark um, a passing like this. And as a nation, we, we, ne we need that too. Um, and we'll be very much walking with her and thinking about her. And the more visible she is, and it'll be very interesting tomorrow in St. Giles Cathedral because people will be able to be really approximate to her mm. um, in a very physical sense for the course of the day. And then there'll be the lying in state in Westminster as well. And then there'll be the great processions and the service, um, which I think a lot of people will, uh, including myself, we'll find it quite hard to get through without with dry eyes. Well, uh, absolutely, yes. I don't know about you, Nana, as well. Just before we go to Michaela, who, who's just joining us, a historian uh, who's uh, going to discuss the Queen's mm -hmm. legacy. Now, that, that, that dry eyes element of it, I must say I was very glad that we had National Treasurer Alistair Stewart on mm. hand when that dreadful announcement was made about the Queen's passing. I don't think I would have been able to hold it together, Nana. No, no, there, there's, I, I don't think I could have done that. I mean... And it's such a, an awful message to have to tell the British public that our monarch is no longer with us. But we, mm. I mean, it's going to be a very tough and challenging few days just to get through it. And I'm going to be taking my children. I, I, yesterday yeah. when somebody said to me, will you go to any of these places to, you know, to commemorate the Queen? I thought, no, I'm going to stay at home and watch it all on TV. But actually, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to take, take my kids maybe on the bank holiday and yeah. go and, you know, yeah. I, I, pay our respects. So I think, you know, it, it'll be something, it's, it's a once in a, I think, once in my lifetime thing. Oh, it's, it's an inc so, incredible yeah. history. We are living through history here, mm. ladies and gentlemen. But